Namaskar, Namaste, Vanaka, Sashri Kral, and welcome back to Grow with the Jam Family. I'm Anjali, and today we're going to be reacting to Indian on Indian and Pakistan Media Stakeout. Yes, and this is from the UN. Uh, so this came out today, and uh, my husband was really excited. He had watched it, and he was like, you guys need to see this. He watched it four times. I just have to tell you that. So we know it's a little bit political, and we try to not make this channel really political. We try to do mostly reactions on what you guys like and, um, you know, fun stuff. So we we don't want to make this too political, but this, he said, just made him so proud of India. And, um, you know, it was just well put together. So we are going to watch it and have you watch it with us. And, um, you know, because we know there's some stuff going on with different articles in India, and it's a touchy subject, so we don't want to uh, go on about it. But um, this was after the UN closed doors with uh, China and Pakistan and India, and, um, and we're just going to react on the India stand um, questions. So let's start it up. Uh, good afternoon, friends, and uh, I'm a newcomer uh, with you, so please uh, cut me some slack uh, because uh, this is the first time I'm uh, interacting with you. Uh, I'm a much more conventional diplomat. I do my job rather than uh, add to the fire and fury uh, of uh, heightening tensions. So I just came here because for the first time, uh, after the end of uh, uh, the Security Council closed consultations, uh, we noted that two states who made national statements tried to pass them off as the will of the international community. But you're all uh, nuanced and well-versed in what and how the Security Council acts. And I therefore do not need to tell you that the Security Council is a very deliberative organization, uh, institution. It works in a very considered manner. Its outcomes are provided to all of us through the President. So if national statements try to masquerade as the will of the international community, I thought I will come across to you too and explain our national position. And what is that? Our national position was and remains that matters related to Article 370 of the Indian Constitution are entirely an internal matter of India. These have no external ramifications. The recent decisions taken by the government of India and our legislative bodies are intended to ensure that good governance is promoted, socioeconomic development is enhanced for our people in Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. You are aware this morning that the Chief Secretary of the state of, of the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir announced a whole set of measures that the government is undertaking to move towards normalcy. We are gratified that the Security Council in its close consultations <coughs> appreciated these efforts, acknowledged them, and indicated that this is the direction in which they would like the international community to move. We are committed to gradually restri uh, removing all restrictions. You are aware of the timetable for that. Let me also tell you, since the changes internal to India have not made any difference to our external orientation, India remains committed to ensure that the that the situation there remains calm and peaceful. 
we are committed to all the agreements that we have signed on this issue. We note that there were some who tried to project an alarmist approach to the situation, which is far from the ground realities. Of particular concern is that one state is using terminology of jihad against and promoting violence in India, including by the leaders. Friends, violence is no solution to the problems that all of us face. So we are committed to and, are, and inconsistent with our previous position that all issues between India and Pakistan, as well as India and any other country, will be resolved bilaterally, peacefully, and in a manner that behoves normal interstate relations between uh, countries. We are saddened that terrorism is being uh, fueled, language and incendiary talk of jihad is being uh, mentioned by people who should know better. All of you are understanding of the situation here. I do not need to tell you what was the outcome of the closed consultations. You will yourself know about it. We stand ready to continue our efforts towards peaceful resolution of all issues in an atmosphere free of terror and violence. And I'm ready, if any of you are willing to ask any questions, I will take. I understand there are many of you. This is my first time. So I said, please cut me slack. And I will, yes, I will. Don't worry. I will. Please, I'll start with you. And just relax. I will start with you. And I will answer five questions, which is three, five times more than both my predecessors who came here answered. Let's start you, since you are so excited. No, I'm not excited. The only thing is the history is excited. There has been resolution on that disputed territory. Uh, of Kashmir and Article 370, fine. That could be an internal matter of you. Thank you for accepting that. No. <laughs> Thank you for accepting that. That All would right, be an internal matter. All right. Thank you. Okay. So Article 370 was enshrined in the in Indian where? Constitution. Thank you. Right? By India. Right. But okay. the thing is, still the reality remains that the, what, what, how do you deal with the UN Security Council resolutions passed in 1947 50, and then Shimla agreement has also failed in bilateralism. Thank you. Thank you. I understand your point. Your point is how do we address this issue? Uh, the history is well known. I don't need to go back. Let us look at the last agreement that India and Pakistan signed. And that goes back to 1972. We are committed to that. And we hope Pakistan too is to try to address these issues in the manner that they have signed on to in a legally binding agreement, and uh, we stand ready to address them in that context. Uh, we can go back in history, but every new agreement overtakes the past. So you are very well versed, my friend. Uh, please appreciate that I started by saying we are committed to that agreement, uh, and we hope Pakistan too is, uh, because if that is so, its action don't seem to be working out with what is in that agreement. Thank you. Yes, sir, I'll answer you, please. I will answer all my friends from Thank the you, South Asian Ambassador. continent. Thank you. Number two. Okay, Ambassador, mm -hmm. the fact remains, while you have said all these things, and you're willing to talk and you're ready to talk, but what has happened? The fact remains, India has steadfastly refused to have any meeting with Pakistan for one reason or another. It has been almost time immemorial. When are you going to sit down with Pakistan and have a meeting? Because you know, and that's the reality. Thank you. Without Can I meeting, answer? Yes, sir. Can okay. I answer the question? Is Let's yes. be specific about question. If your question is whether India and Pakistan have talked, let me tell you, I have been a member of many delegations to Islamabad. You're aware of that. I myself served as an Indian diplomat in Islamabad. So please understand, there are normal diplomatic ways of dealing with uh, countries when countries deal with each other. 
that's the way to do it. But using terror to try uh, and push uh, your goals is not the way that normal states behave in. No democracy will acknowledge or accept talks when terror thrives. Stop terror to start talks. Yes, sir. Well said. Yes, sir. You wanted me? And so that you will not have any doubts that I've answered three Pakistani questions. Third. <laughs> yes. When will you begin a dialogue with Pakistan? So let me begin by coming up to you shaking your hand. <laughs> Start now. So let me tell you, we've already extended our hand of friendship by saying we are committed to similar agreement. Let us wait for a response on that from the Pakistani side. Now I go to you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I will. Gender uh, I will be gender neutral. Thank yes. you, Amanda Price from Al Jazeera English. Yes, ma'am. Question for you. Um, how do you respond to Pakistan's assertion that the very fact that we're having a meeting here at the Security Council means this is no longer a bilateral issue? This has been internationalized. Ma'am, you've been covering the Security Council. You are aware that in close consultations, anyone, especially parties to the dispute, can try and throw in anything for the consideration of the members of the Security Council. That's the nature of the beast. However, I've, you have seen what's the outcome of that meeting. There is, uh, I don't want to add further, I've repeatedly said we are ready to address these issues in a manner that states who have normal approaches to international ties should uh, address them. Uh, and in our case, we are committed to the Simla Agreement. It's now for Pakistan to make that commitment to stop terror, to start talks. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Ladies, yes. Yoshita. Thank you, Master. After four questions, so that nobody thinks that I am being biased towards you. Yes, ma'am. Um, just before the meeting, Russia said that it favors a bilateral track between India and Pakistan on Kashmir. That's, again, a viewpoint of many other countries here at the UN. So, uh, again, uh, in a way that Pakistan that's say it said that uh, it's internationalizing the issue, but with other countries not in favor of that, uh, how do you see uh, uh, this, uh, given the fact that other countries are saying it's a bilateral issue? Yeah. I do not, like my predecessors, take on the responsibility of speaking for the council. The council has spoken. It's pretty clear. All of you are aware of what uh, outcomes are there. I will not comment on it. Uh, let me tell you, India's commitment to uh, address these issues on the bilateral track has very broad acceptance globally. Anyone else? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Thank, you. Thank yes. you, Ambassador. Yes. You, you always uh, had a complaint that I never spoke with you. Yes. I'm ready now. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the fifth, but I will give you one sixth. Mr. And Ambassador, you spoke about normalization and uh, removing uh, the restrictions in Kashmir. Uh, so are you here admitting that there is something wrong that happened? Uh, one second. One how question India, at a time. I never answer more than India, one. one. How India is going to address right. the, will, the will of the Kashmiri people? Sure. Thank you. So let me tell you, there is something called prevention is better than cure. Uh, you, what we, uh, the measures that we took were preventive in nature. Uh, they were designed to stop terrorists from bleeding our people. You noticed that in the 10 days that have passed, there are no casualties. There are no fatal, 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 fatalities. fatalities. Uh, that's because every effort was made to work uh, to ensure that our people in Jammu and Kashmir are not adversely affected in terms of their lives. Yes, there's always a difficulty that sometimes these will lead to restrictions. We acknowledge that. We are an open society. We acknowledge that. But it's a balance of choice that the administrators on the ground should make, not journalists here or diplomats here. Uh, please allow them the space and time to address these issues uh, they have controlled the situation. You have seen there's not one fatality. In similar situations, uh, in large parts of the world, 
including previously in Jammu and Kashmir, there have been large fatalities if such an uh, uh, issue arises. So please give us some time. We are addressing it in a democratic manner, in a manner that uh, we are committed to, to address uh, difficulties that our people in Jammu and Kashmir are facing. So last question, ma'am. You talked about Pakistan promoting extremist elements in the region. What do you have to say about the uh, international organization accusing Indian uh, troops and soldiers committing human rights violation in Indian administrated Kashmir? I don't know what you're talking of, international organization. The UN didn't say anything. I don't go by, pardon, uh, well, madam, uh, yes, let's go one by one. Let's go. Please, please, I will answer. Right. Um, there is nobody. Nobody which is intergovernmental in nature, which has accused India of anything that you're saying, anything. Uh, uh, please, let me explain. Let me explain. You've asked your question. Please cut me that slack. Give me that slack. I'm new to this game. Please <laughs> understand that. So, no intergovernmental organization in the world has ever said anything about Indian democracy. India's commitment to human rights. We are the country who started issues of apartheid at the UN. None of you who are talking about this were even worried about that. Don't forget, India was the country which changed the charter uh, of the uh, human rights declaration from, ex please, 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 it's fair. You had your chance, allow me to speak. Uh, mm -hmm. We are not in a debate, we are in a question and answer modality. So. We are the country which changed the word all men are born equal in the Human Rights Charter to all humans are born equal, signifying men and women are equal. So please, yes. our constitution is an open book. Our, our legislature is an open book. Put on the TV, you will see we have different shades of opinion in India. There will be issues discussed. And if there are issues, these will be addressed by our courts. We don't need international busybodies to uh, try and tell us how to run our lives. We are a billion plus people. We know how to uh, do. And a commitment to democracy, unlike those who are now trying to speak to me, have no, uh, uh, whose experience is extremely limited. We have vast experience. We will fulfill our goals. We are committed to addressing uh, the difficulties some of our people have. And please give us the time and space to address these. Thank you very much. I wouldn't have answered because, as I said, you, none of you answered a question. People who came here and just walked off. As, an, as a representative of an open democracy, I am ready to answer. Please, 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 please let me answer this. So, public order is integral to ensuring that democracy prospers. Uh, without public order, uh, no democracy can function. So there are reasonable restrictions. We acknowledge that these are restrictions. We are easing them. Again, let us not here decide uh, what and to what extent and how fast this is done. There is a pace. There is a trajectory. The trajectory is clear. You may not be happy with the pace. Some others may be unhappy with the pace. But it's the people on the ground, the administrators who are committed, who work under democratically elected leaders who will decide this. And let me assure you, India is a vibrant, thriving democracy, and we live by it every day. Thank you very much. Yay. That was well said. Well said. So I can see why my husband was so excited to share this. and. Uh, with us and with you guys because he was so proud by the end of his speech like he he's such a well he said it was his first time so you could see he wasn't um you know maybe a little bit nervous at the beginning but he definitely the way he spoke about each question and the way he talked about india being such a diverse culture and just and a democracy and let us do you know what we have planned out like we are working on it you got to give us some time and if other countries have issues let's talk no terror let's talk and that's yeah. such 
a wonderful quote, like, don't fight. Let's sit down and peacefully talk and work stuff out. If you have issues with us, but they're working on it internally, and they seem, you know, the way he talked very eloquently, and it seemed like they had it under control. They were working through. They were trying to keep the peace while they were making changes. Changes are always hard, even in a democracy. You know, you have to kind of not let chaos reign before, you know, things settle down. So it seems like they're trying to keep the chaos from happening as they work through these issues and kind of get everything, um, you know, back to, back to where it should be, I guess. Yeah. Right. So this was kind of long, but he really talked very well. Like he, you know, he answered questions from Pakistan. He answered questions from other uh, countries. And I feel like his answers were really well um, said, like he really, represented India well and the pride of India and yeah. the country. So what did you like, Ganji? I liked how he, like, he went off his, like, platform, kind of. Mm-hmm. His platform is what I would call it. And he went off to go shake the Pakistan and then he was like, okay, now we're friends. Now let's talk. Right. And that was a Pakistani um, reporter that was saying, like, when is India going to start these talks? And he's like, let's start now. I'm going to shake your hand. And, you know, let's start these talks, but talking, not terror, talking. And I love that. Gandhi is such an inspiration for so many people here, too. A lot of our great leaders, Martin Luther King, there's so many great leaders that used his inspiration, his words, and and peaceful fighting, basically, fighting through peace. Um, And just so many changes, good changes have happened that way. And so, you know, him saying, no terror, let's talk, let's sit down and talk, you know, we'll work things out. But what they're trying to do internally, they need time to make it good. So this was really great. And um, I found a thing from the UN. Um, The position of the United Nations on this region, governed by the Charter and Applicable Security Council Resolution, the Security Secretary General also recalls the 1972 agreement on bilateral relations between India, India and Pakistan, also known as the Salam Agreement, Samilia Agreement, which states that the final status of Jammu and Kashmir is to be settled by peaceful means. And that's from the United Nations website. So I love that. Um, and I just love that the representative from India was a Muslim he and he spoke so well and that speaks volumes on India and its diversity and you know he's like I'll shake your hand I think we've done some songs that are like if you come to India peacefully we'll shake your hand Mm -hmm. and then we're friends shake my hand you come in peace we're friends we'll welcome you with open arms and that's such a powerful message and that you know he spoke so well and represented india so well and with such pride um you know my husband said his his chest was just so big after the speech and it's so true and uh, you know our hearts here are you know the usa is our home it's our country and we love it and we will stand by it but india is our home away from home and you know this makes us proud when people speak about, you know, the peace is the answer and, and you know, they're, he just spoke so well about India. So, yeah, I hope you guys like this. If you like this video, don't forget to click that like button down below because the more you like it, the more YouTube shares our videos. Yep. And don't forget to subscribe and join our wonderful family and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.